The first piece we're playing is En Saga by Sibelius, which is one of his tone poems for orchestra. He wrote many tone poems. Um, en Saga is quite an early one, I think it's Opus 9, and it doesn't have a particularly clear story, so it's quite unusual in that way. Uh, but it's got a lot of the special characteristics of Spalius's music. It's got a sort of ruggedness, a kind of wildness about it. Um, it makes you think of nature, but it also, you know, Spalius was very much inspired by Finnish epics and legends, like stories from the, the Kalevala, and, you know, about Finnish warriors doing great deeds or succeeding and failing. And um, it's got a bit of that character too. Um, it, it's a beautiful piece, it's got a wonderful melancholy clarinet solo, it's got some very dramatic, brassy, fiery music, um, it's, it's a wonderful masterpiece. And then we're playing the Rachmaninoff Rhapsody on the theme of Paganini, which of course is a great favourite, I know, with the Opus One audiences. Uh, we have a fantastic pianist, Andrew Tyson, an American player, uh, he's quite young. And, but very, very fresh. He's got lots of fresh ideas and fantastic technique. He plays it really, really well. And, and I love that piece. It's, it's, the orchestration is so detailed. It's like, um, it's almost like Ravel or something in the, the detail of the orchestration. You know, suddenly you have a little glockenspiel note and then a, a piccolo note and the violins come in. It's incredibly detailed. And, and of course, there's such a range of different colors and emotions within all the different variations. Um, leading, of course, to the 18th variation, which is the beautiful, famous slow variation where Rachmaninoff turns the original melody upside down and makes something completely different from it. So, can't wait to do that. And then in the second half, we're playing Beethoven's Second Symphony, which I think is one of my favourites of Beethoven's symphonies. I, I really love the, the even-numbered symphonies, <laughs> and, I, and I particularly love number two, because it, it comes in this interesting place between the first symphony, which is, people always say it's a bit like Haydn, more in the style of Mozart or Haydn, very classical. And people often talk about number three, the Eroica symphony, as being sort of the beginning of romanticism in music. And, and, and number two for me is really interesting because I think it falls between those two camps. So you'll have you'll have a, a piece going along, it sounds very polite and, and almost like a Haydn, and then suddenly you get sport sandos and sudden jolts and syncopations in the music, and, and you think, oh no, this is definitely, this is Beethoven. <laughs> and so it's got, it's a very dramatic symphony, but it's also, it's got a lot of sunshine in it as well, and it's got a wonderfully sort of ebullient and positive finale, uh, and a beautiful slow movement. Um, so yeah, can't wait to do that.